Good morning. I am uh, Nikos Nikolaidis, a professor at the Technical University of Crete, and uh, I would like to talk to you today about uh, soil aggregation and uh, try to explain to you and persuade you why it is important to measure uh, soil aggregation uh, in our long-term uh, experiments and uh, observatories. So, Common agricultural practices have uh, caused uh, significant soil fertility declines. We have been losing carbon and nutrients from the soil. We have been losing soil biodiversity. And in general, we have uh, a significant erosion. Here, for instance, in the pictures that you see, uh, there is an example from a field in uh, northern Greece uh, that has been plowed. However, because of uh, oversight machinery, uh, it cannot be plowed followed, following the contours of the field, and uh, it is being plowed perpendicularly. And uh, in this uh, way, it is uh, causing significant erosion. And uh, in particular, uh, every 50 meters, we have uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, erosion uh, areas uh, that uh, we are losing significant amount of uh, soil. And uh, together with the soil, we are losing carbon and nutrients, and uh, this is causing the whole problem of the decline in fertility and the loss of biodiversity. Uh, here we see data that uh, uh, these are uh, uh, chrono sequence data, which uh, means that we see the decline of uh, carbon and uh, uh, nitrogen in the soil uh, following uh, tilling. This is a conversion from uh, forest or grassland to cropland. And uh, what we can see is that uh, within uh, five years, we have lost most of the carbon and the nitrogen, the nutrients from the soil, and thus we have lost the fertility uh, from our soils. Of course, uh, uh, what we can do to reverse that is uh, to create and stimulate the creation of uh, uh, aggregates. Here, for instance, you can see a soil aggregate. And I'm going to try to explain to you how these soil aggregates are being formed. So a conceptual model for this soil aggregate is that uh, uh, we have a, a silt and clay particles, and especially the clay particles, that they're very small and they're being charged. And uh, uh, once uh, you add uh, organic carbon into the uh, organic matter into the soil, this organic matter is uh, being absorbed by the soil, so the, it is neutralizing the soil charges. And in this way, the particles can be stuck much easier than uh, before. And uh, in this way, we have the beginning of soil aggregation. Then, of course, uh, as uh, uh, we incorporate in this uh, soil, uh, ag soil aggregates uh, particulate organic matter, plant residues and roots, uh, these are being colonized by microbial decomposers, and in this way, we start creating the macro aggregates, meaning that these aggregates are greater than 250 microns in uh, diameter. Uh, further fragmentation of the particulate organic matter within the macro aggregate creates a micro aggregate formation, smaller aggregates that are between 53 and 250 micron sizes. And then, of course, uh, uh, if we don't keep on adding uh, uh, organic matter, we are going to have the decrease in microbial activity, the loss of aggregate stability, and basically the aggregate disruption. This is a kind of a natural process. Uh, however, once uh, we start uh, uh, peeling, then we have mechanical disruption of these aggregates, and we are breaking them up. While if uh, we weren't tilling, these aggregates are water uh, stable. So uh, basically, these uh, soil aggregates are the smallest functional ecological units. Uh, we have uh, large connected pores. We have carbon and energy sources. We have water uh, drainage and oxygen flow. We have smaller interaggregate pores, plant available water, diffusion barrier to oxygen. We have anoxic areas and so forth. So basically, within this uh, uh, macro aggregate, we have a wide range of habitats for microbial functional yields and ge biogeochemical reactions that support soil functions.
functions. And uh, let me show you an example of uh, uh, this aggregation process. Here in uh, the, the blue presents uh, data, the water stable aggregate in the different fractions, silt clay, uh, uh, silt, uh, clay uh, uh, micro aggregate uh, uh, and macro aggregate. Uh, and macro aggregate, and this is the actual, uh, um, uh, and this is the, uh, the water stable aggregate uh, fractionation. So basically what we see here is that the, the sizes that they are greater than 250 is 46% uh, for the, what we call the set aside field and 65% for 46% uh, for, for the crop, uh, uh, the, for cropland and 65% of uh, uh, the set aside. So the difference between uh, uh, the, the field that it was set aside, it was uh, set aside for about 30 years. So within 30 years, uh, the water stable uh, aggregates increased, uh, the macro aggregates increased from 46% to 65%. And at the same time, the mean diameter of the particles increased from uh, uh, 0.53 uh, millimeters to 0.71 millimeters, which is a very large uh, percentage of change in uh, uh, the aggregates, uh, in the size of the aggregates. And of course, what we see is that uh, these macro aggregates is where all of the carbon or most of the carbon and the nitrogen is being stored. So basically, we have the sequestration and the protection of carbon in these uh, uh, aggregates. So uh, what we need to do in order to be able to measure it, we need to go through uh, what we call the water stable uh, fractionation procedure. So in uh, the first uh, step, uh, we uh, uh, separate uh, this uh, with different sizes uh, greater than uh, 2000 micrometer, 1000 to 2000, 250 to uh, 1000. So these are the macro aggregates the microaggregates and the silk clay uh, mic, uh, microaggregates. So uh, then after that, we start uh, going through, uh, this is the first uh, step of uh, the aggregation uh, fractionation procedure. And then after that, uh, we correct for the sand, uh, uh, the particles that they are already sand, which means that they are greater than 250, uh, the inorganic uh, uh, particles. And uh, we determine the silt the clay in its aggregate type. And then we are doing the micro aggregate isolation fractionation, which means that we separate in the macro aggregates uh, the different fractions, uh, which is uh, the silt clay, the micro aggregates, and the uh, particular organic matter. And then within uh, uh, micro aggregates, we further separate them into silt clay and find particulate organic matter. So going through this, we can figure out exactly the exact composition of these uh, aggregates uh, and how much uh, silk lay and uh, fine or coarse particular organic matter are contributing to the fractionation, to the micro, to the uh, aggregation of micro aggregates and macro aggregates. So we have developed uh, the CAST model and uh, basically the CAST model is doing this exact uh, procedure. It is uh, uh, modeling the aggregation process and how the silt clay particles uh, are, uh, and uh, the micro aggregates are uh, incorporated into the macro aggregates and how it is being, they are being uh, aggregated and they're being disrupted. So, and of course, uh, once uh, we have this uh, model, then uh, what we can uh, do is uh, we can simulate, uh, we can take chrono sequence uh, data. Here is from one field here in Greece, and we can calibrate using some of the data. And uh, here you can see with uh, carbon addition, here you can see the carbon addition, uh, how the uh, macro aggregate uh, fraction is uh, increasing. And uh, uh, this is the total uh, carbon in the soil as it is being added and how the uh, micro and silk clay fractions are changing uh, with uh, uh, time. And uh, this is, of course, uh, the different uh, uh, particle sizes. So we can uh, model uh, both uh, the carbon and the particle uh, size distribution. So uh, once we have uh, the different sizes and the carbon, we can calculate uh, the changes in porosity 
bulk density, and of course, uh, the hydraulic conductivity changes in the soil. So basically, these properties that we consider them to be stable, once is, is uh, to be steady through time, uh, once we add organic carbon, uh, these uh, uh, properties are changing, like uh, porosity is changing, the bulk density is changing, and uh, the hydraulic conductivity of the soil is changing. And uh, of course, uh, always the question is, uh, uh, how fast can this process happen? Here we have uh, a four year experiment where we have been uh, putting during the summer, uh, growing tomatoes. And in one of these uh, plants, uh, in one of these uh, trials, uh, we are adding uh, organic uh, carbon. And uh, what you can see is that uh, uh, we till the soil and once we till the soil, we add organic carbon uh, you can see the particle size is uh, increasing uh, uh, continuously, and then it breaks again, and then it is increasing and so forth. But within uh, weeks, uh, the aggregation process is happening. So it is a very fast process, and uh, that means that uh, uh, you are having um, significant changes in the hydraulic properties of your soil. So, uh, trying to answer the question, why should we measure uh, um, aggregate fractionation? Well, first, we need to understand that land use conversion to agricultural land, meaning tilling, destroys soil structure and enables the processes for carbon loss and nutrient losses from the soil. The second, we need to understand that uh, these aggregates are the smallest functional ecological unit that we have in the soil that incorporates all of the processes uh, that are happening in the soil and also the soil uh, functions and the soil services. So uh, once uh, organic matter is added to the soil, we have very fast aggregation and this is uh, happening within weeks to months. And of course, aggregation protects and sequesters soil carbon and nutrients. And uh, this is at different rates of degradation depending on where this carbon is being sequestered. And this is important for uh, modeling. And instead of using one rate of degradation, there are different rates of degradation and different rates of carbon turnover. And then uh, finally, aggregation changes soil structure, which means changes bulk density, porosity, particle size distribution, and hydraulic conductivity. And uh, continuing on why is this important? It is important because uh, uh, as we said from the beginning, current uh, uh, common agricultural uh, practices uh, have been uh, degrading the soil. And here we see a typical uh, degradation uh, curve. Uh, and uh, uh, there are, uh, it depends on where we are. I mean, if we keep on degrading the soil uh, a lot, uh, we are coming into a point where the system is going to collapse. Uh, if uh, uh, we intervene before it is uh, too late, we can avoid the degradation trajectory, and this is the line here. And of course, uh, uh, in many cases, we are at the point where we need to do soil restoration. Okay, and uh, uh, and we need uh, if we need to do soil restoration, uh, one of the ways that we can see whether soil is uh, restoring its uh, properties is uh, to measure. Uh, the uh, aggregate fractionation. This is very important when we want to address climate change, desertification, and of course, uh, a restoration of the fertility of the soil uh, for use for agricultural uh, purposes. Thank you very much.